and sunny. You're now the first astronaut to fly on both Starliner and Dragon, admittedly one on the way up and one on the way down. Was there anything about either spacecraft that you found you liked more about the other that stood out as a feature, especially in terms of crew amenities? More Velcro on SpaceX, <laughs> on Dragon. That's a crew amenity. That's a crew amenity, which we've really talked nice. about that. Yeah. That's why I said it. Yeah. Um, you know, they're both unique and they both have their purpose and made to do the same thing. But I think what's really cool is, you know, give a problem to do for two different people and see how they solve it. Um, Starliner is a really awesome spacecraft, like Butch had mentioned, with the integration of manual control as well as automation, as well as its vision system. Star, uh, Dragon is a very comfortable spacecraft that tells you what it's doing, which is very nice versus having to interpret displays as we have done throughout the space programs with, uh, you know, former programs including um, shuttle. So it's, I don't know if I have a preference, honestly, they're both great. Uh, for different reasons. Butch, this question is for you. Where do you lay the blame for your Starliner test flight? Clearly Starliner was not ready to fly when it did. Whom do you hold responsible for everything that happened? Thanks. That is a question that I cannot answer in uh, a couple of comments. But I'll start with me. There were some issues, of course, that happened with Starliner. There were some issues, of course, that happened that prevented us from returning on Starliner. And I'll start with me. There were questions that I, as the commander of the spacecraft, that I should have asked, and I did not. At the time, I didn't know I needed to. And maybe you could call that hindsight, but I'll start and point the finger and I'll blame me. I could ask some questions, and the answers to those questions could have turned the tide. Um, so blame, that's a term, I don't like that term, but certainly there's responsibility throughout uh, all the programs, uh, and certainly you can, you can start with me. Um, responsibility with Boeing, yes. Responsibility with NASA, yes. All the way up and down the chain, we all are responsible. We all own this, and we are, in this business, trust, you cannot do this business without trust. You have to have ultimate trust. And for someone to step forward in, the, in these different organizations and say, hey, I'm culpable for a part of that issue, uh, that goes a long way to maintaining trust. So we're not going to look back and say this happened or that happened and that person or that issue or that entity is to blame. We're going to look forward and say, what are we going to use our lessons learned from this whole process and make sure that we are successful in the future? This is a tough business. The analogy about it is it's always a curvy road. It's never straight in this business. And minimizing those curves, curves and effectual, uh, being systems and processes in effect to, to prevent some of these curves is what we have to do as we leave low Earth orbit and go beyond to the moon and beyond that. So we're going to look forward. And that's, uh, that's the focus. Question for uh, both you, Sunny, and uh, Butch. Uh, given an opportunity, would you guys uh, go up on Starliner again? Yes. Because we're going to rectify all the issues that we, that we encountered. Yeah. We're going to fix them. We're going to make it work. Uh, Boeing's completely committed. NASA is completely committed. And with that, I get on in a heartbeat. Yeah, I would, I would agree. The, the spacecraft is really capable. Uh, there were a couple things that need to be fixed, like Butch mentioned, and um, folks are actively working on that. Uh, but it's a, it is a great spacecraft, and it has a lot of capability that other spacecraft don't have. And to see that thing successful and to be part of that program is an honor. So your mission became unusually political. Given your experience, do you think other astronauts are going to get nervous that they could be caught in the middle of a political fight? And is there a point where, you know, this starts to jeopardize safety of a mission when you start looking at all these politics that come into play? Thank you. You know, I think Nick's got some good insight on this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the way I'd like to answer that is that when we're up there operating in space, you don't feel the politics. You don't feel any of that. It's focused strictly on mission. And, and, and you know, if I, I step back a little bit to the question before, 
Butch and Sonny talk up here, they make it sound like, you know, well, you know, everybody figured out what they could do with us. The reality is they are highly skilled, very technically competent, and it took everything I had on every day to keep up with them as they're moving along. So they, they were more than just gap fillers on the station. They were productive, pushing the station mission forward. Uh, and Sonny was the station commander, so she was calling the shots. Um, so you get in that environment, that operational environment, the politics, they don't, they don't make it up there. Um, we are working as a part of an international team that spans the globe and works with you know, half a dozen mission control centers spread around the globe that are talking in multiple languages, and we just figure out how to make it happen. And that's the magic of human spaceflight, is that we can focus on something so positive that pulls people together. Um, and we've been doing that for a long time. Sonny, have you been surprised by the continuing and intense interest in your space saga? I would have to say yes, absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting. We go and launch, and we knew it was a little bit unique, obviously, first time flying on a new spacecraft. So, yeah, that was, that was interesting. But, you know, then life goes on up there. And I mentioned uh, yesterday, you know, we pivoted, and we are International Space Station crew members, and we're doing what all of our other friends in, uh, in the astronaut office do is go and work and train and, and do science, amazing science experiments up on the International Space Station. So, you know, I think you sort of get uh, maybe a little bit tunnel visioned in what your job is. So, it's, you, know, the, you know, do your job type of thing, right? And so you're not really aware of what else is going on um, down here. I hate to say that. Uh, you know, maybe the world doesn't revolve around us, but we revolve around the world, like something like that. But, uh, you know, I think we were just really focused on what we we're doing and trying to be part of the team and making sure we pulled our way for the team. Um, of course, we heard some things, and I'll let, you know, obviously hand this off to Butch, uh, heard some stuff from our friends and family that people were interested and wondering what was going on and concerned about our health and all that kind of stuff while we were up there. But, I mean, we were just part of the team, doing the job, filling in wherever we could, and then knowing that there's rotational flights and we will be coming home eventually on a rotational flight. So, no, I don't think we were aware to the degree. Um, pretty honored and humbled by the fact of when we came home, like, wow, there's, there are a lot of people who are interested, very thankful, very amazed that we could hopefully be one positive element to bring people together. Yeah, I don't know that there's much I could add to that. Just thankful for a nation that cares, a nation that prays, and a nation that uh, is involved in the processes that are important to all of us. When you re-entered the Earth's atmosphere and came back to gravity, can you talk, talk specifically about any kind of weird either sensations or experiences that you've had dealing with that over the last couple of weeks? And more importantly, did you know that you guys had been greeted by dolphins <laughs> when you splashed out? I, I can tell you that returning from space to Earth through the atmosphere inside of a 3,000 uh, degree fireball of plasma is weird. Regardless of how you look at it. Doesn't matter what type. Yeah, it doesn't matter what type. Uh, it's thrilling. Um, it's amazing. I, I remember thinking about the structure of the capsule and the stresses that it was taking, uh, that, was, that was ongoing as the drogues came out and the whole capsule starts shaking and twisting um, and thinking about the stresses taking place and going, wow, I hope those, I hope those, I hope those cables hold. <laughs> and then the parachutes open up and you're like, I, I've said it many times, there's not a better feeling returning from space than the parachutes open and work. And uh, I didn't have the view in front of me, and thankfully Nick did. He had a view of the camera going out right off the top, and he said, three parachutes, good parachutes, four good parachutes. And I tell you what, it's a it's great, great feeling. It's a great and it's uh, exhilarating because this, again, I can't help because it's within me. I, this is our national focus, national goals. We don't do this because NASA decides to do this or this or this. This is Congress and everything coming together to affect a human spaceflight program with a purpose. And uh, part of that purpose includes bringing those astronauts back to Earth. And it's a thrilling ride uh, like no other that you could imagine. And satisfying. Yeah. And I had requested dolphins as kind of a joke. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, someday, they pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll just, I just hats off, like Butch said, to Nick for, he was just commentating the whole way down. So there was obviously, no, we, we had trained this and gone over it while we were up on the space station and reviewed. But just to hear every, everything as it was ticking along, it's just really awesome to, like, you can envision it. Uh, you had a display. That I think there's a camera that goes up, right, to, to see it. And Butch and I both had a window on either side where we were. And I was watching through the window as much as I could, but then all of a sudden, you know, with the heating, it glazes over, and then you can't see outside. Um, a funny thing that happened, though, after you can't see, you can still sort of see through it. We knew it was daylight, and we knew the folks were coming out to rig the spacecraft, and I see a little tennis shoe sort of going in front of the window. So I'm like, okay, our friends are here uh, getting us ready to get back on the boat, and that was, that was pretty special, too. I didn't see a fin, though. I wish I had saw a fin. Once you got your feet back on terra firma, what's the first thing both of you wanted to do, and were there any foods you were craving <laughs> after nine plus months? Go ahead, son. Oh yeah, I wanted to hug my husband and hug my dogs, and I'll say that order in that order, but maybe <laughs> maybe not. No, I'm just joking. But um, of course, food. I you know something that's just like for home, for me, like something that is very, you know, reminds you of home. And I had, my father was a vegetarian, so I had a, a good grilled cheese sandwich when I got home. So that reminded me of him. Yeah, certainly embracing the family again, but also the opportunity, and I've already said it a couple of times, is just to say thank you to a nation that uh, got involved in all of this. Uh, it's, it makes it special, not just for us, but for all, I think our nation as a whole. So thank you. Sonny and Butch, both of you all have a long history of being active and athletes, but with that being said, obviously you all spent nearly nine months in space. What does that uh, recuperation and recovery process look like getting acclimated back here to Earth? I'll start. Um, I can tell you we have a group of, of individuals, astronaut strength conditioning and rehabilitation specialists, and we are directly integrated with them day in and day out. They send us protocols to work out. And I can tell you, I'm not as young as I used to be, but I was stronger on space station doing more weight and more reps on exercises than I have in my entire life. Because this group of professionals work to get us stronger and stronger and stronger. We're trying to minimize muscle atrophy, minimize our bone loss. So if we go to other planets, the moon and other planets, uh, in, the, in the foreseeable future, that we will be able to function when we get there. It's a whole science built around these, this team of individuals that are working to help us better understand human physiology and what zero gravity does to it and how we can mitigate the effects of the bone loss and the muscle atrophy. So day in and day out, I mean, I, I worked out every single day. We went into quarantine on the 22nd of April. And starting on the 22nd of April, I never missed a single day of workout because your body can recuperate in zero gravity. It doesn't have the normal stresses of gravity on it all the time. So you work out real hard, you hurt for an hour, and it finally fades away and you're ready to go the next day. So I applaud those individuals. They are making huge gains in the preparation to go beyond low Earth orbit. And it's uh, science that is taking place day in and day out and has for years and we're still learning and we're still progressing. Yeah, at uh, like day 265 on the A-RED, because it counts all your uh, days that you go into a workout, I was thinking, I wish the hay was in the barn. But <laughs> every single day, just like Butch is saying, you got to get on the machine and, and work out. And it, it, it actually is a really great stress relief to be able to have that time up there and run or bike or lift weights. It's really great. And the, the, the folks that Butch is talking about, is, along with the nutritionists, really are looking out for us and making sure that when we get back here to planet Earth with gravity, we'll be able to function. So yeah, it's an adjustment when we get back. And they're here, they're here right with us from day one when we landed, uh, ready to see, one, evaluate us and see how we're doing and then work on a protocol to get us back. And like I said, I, I sneakily went for a run yesterday, but that's all as a result of their hard work. Yeah, I mean, who, who, would, who would ever get, even, even imagine that you come back from 10 months in space, roughly 10 months, and within a week, you run two miles at an eight-minute pace. I mean, that, that's, not, that's not even conceivable that the body could handle that. But these folks get us ready to where those type of things happen. 